Welcome to Part 1 of Introduction to Information Classification for Content Management. Hello, I'm David Shaw, your instructor for this Introduction to Classification Models for Content Management. For more than 10 years, I've been developing metadata models and designing and developing solutions for component content management and learning content management systems. In this presentation, we will be looking at an overview of models for classifying and managing information in a content management system. At the end, you will be prepared for a more detailed introduction to the development of a taxonomy and, following that, the development of a metadata. Classifying information is central to managing our business, but what does this really mean? Why do we need to classify information? Well, we need to classify information to manage the affairs and processes of our business and to manage its always growing body of knowledge. Without knowing if we have a piece of information, we will probably experience frustration as an everyday experience. Time and effort will be wasted in fruitless searches. People will spend time creating new documents from scratch when a version already exists somewhere in the organization. Because documents can't be found, copies will proliferate as people squirrel them away in private stores that eventually swamp the shared network. The worst case, which will often occur, is when people can't tell if they have the most recent version that was submitted to management or a customer. The problem in all organizations is how to manage this mass of information. Every day we generate new copies and versions of information, and nobody knows where to find the authoritative source. As mentioned, we also need to classify information to manage our always growing body of knowledge. This body of knowledge represents our experience and expertise. Having access to it efficiently increases the effectiveness of our organization, especially in competitive situations. This reduces costs and increases profit margins. Classifying information tells us what it is. For example, is this a duck or a dog? Is it a financial report or a project proposal? Is it a standard template? Because a taxonomy is hierarchical, we can aggregate like or related information. We know a duck is a bird. We know a dog is a mammal. Often corporate taxonomies reflect the organizational structure, but this is a mistake. Organizations often change their reporting relationships. An enterprise taxonomy for content management should be based on major content or record types. When information is classified, we can use this meta information to search for buckets of content. As we apply more classification to information, for example, the author, we can use this as a filter to refine our search and restrict the number of documents that we find. Simply putting knowledge online is not enough. It must be carefully structured and tailored to the user's needs, with good navigation aids. We need to answer the question, who needs to know what? The bottom line is the user's everyday experience. We've all been through the immense frustration of forgetting where a file is located and trying searches that can't find it, yet we know it is there somewhere. Far too often classification models are based on a corporate standard that has no real relationship to the needs of lines of business. The bottom line is the needs of actual users. These needs can usually be identified by asking the questions who, what, when, where, why and how. Further thought may show that you need to identify how information is reused and transformed into other variants or products and how this impacts the requirements for classification. There are three models of classification that we will briefly examine in this introduction. The most common you will encounter are taxonomy and metadata and detailed discussions of these are presented in other course modules. These three classification models have different potential knowledge value, 
from taxonomy at the bottom of the stack to the richness of an ontology forming a semantic knowledge web. The cost of implementation also rises, but offsetting this is the opportunity cost of ignorance. Note that for analysis and planning purposes, there are several types of metadata with the three most important groups shown here. Groups are also known as types and views. When developing a classification scheme for content management, there can be confusion over the meaning of terms. A special type of conflict between terms arises when they are in different domains or namespaces. These conflicts can be resolved by prefixing the term with a namespace. For example, a table can be in the furniture namespace or the data or document namespace. A well-known namespace used in web publishing is Dublin Core, which uses the prefix DC. You will find this in the head of many web pages. A taxonomy is the classification of organisms in an ordered system that indicates natural relationships. It is a hierarchical classification of things. There is only one correct place for a piece of information in a taxonomy. Information should not be copied to other nodes. For example, a project plan should not be stored with a related procurement request. That type of cross-linking is the job of metadata. An ideal taxonomy is wide and shallow to make it easy to navigate and quick to reach an end node where the information resides. Engineering and scientific taxonomies, by definition, will be deep, requiring more expert knowledge to use them. It is a mistake to think there is only one perfect taxonomy for the information in your organization. Nodes can also be called terms, categories, or tags and the process of using them can be called categorization, classification, or tagging. Nodes are organized in an inverted tree as shown in the previous screen, with a root node at the top. Sometimes we also say that a node has a parent or a sibling or a child. An end node is also a child node. An orphan node has no family connections to the tree. This is an indication that your taxonomy is not yet a taxonomy and it needs more thought and work. Metadata is information about information. This sounds a bit confusing, but think about a book that has a title, subject, and author. These are all pieces of metadata. They are not a hierarchical taxonomy. Metadata is generally a flat list of attributes and values. To use our book example again, the attribute is author and the value is name. The value may also be a list, for example a list of provinces. The value could also be selected from a full taxonomy, or a list could be made from a subset of a taxonomy. Preferably values should be based on fixed vocabularies or standards. Freeform text does not allow reliable machine processing. Attributes should only allow one value. These attributes, or fields if we think in database terms, define different aspects of the information. These are also called facets, especially if they are taxonomies, and you may have heard of faceted taxonomies for navigation on a website. These are often presented as categories or themes. An example of faceted navigation is a collection of recipes organized by cuisine, like Asian, meal type, like breakfast, and food group, like beef, chicken, or fish. If you like beer, it can be classified as ale, lager, stout, porter, and so on. Facets can also be used to restrict data to a certain set, such as documents on a certain subject, or to select more specific information, such as documents on a certain subject by a specific author. As you can see, the relationship between taxonomy and metadata can be confusing and sometimes subject to argument that these are separate things. They are, but in this course we consider a taxonomy to be a structured field in a larger metadata model. An ontology is a set of concepts about an object and can be used to form a semantic web. An ontology is a model for describing subjects that consists of a set of types properties, and relationship types. For example, 
An ontology on hockey might include types such as coach, player, general manager, team, and position, and relationships such as coached, played position, played for, during, and so forth. Ontologies can be applied to information resources to form a rich basis for knowledge management. For example, our hockey ontology might manifest itself as follows. Guy Lafleur was a player. He played for the Montreal Canadiens in 1976. He played the right wing position. Scotty Bowman coached the Montreal Canadiens in 1976. Software capable of leveraging ontologies for searching and browsing information resources could then help us discover that Scotty Bowman coached Guy Lafleur, for example, and then point us to information about each of them and about the Montreal Canadiens, not to mention other right-wingers or about things that happened in 1976. There is an emerging trend that views ontology-based approaches as the most powerful means of describing information resources and therefore holding the greatest potential for providing value in the form of knowledge to organizations. Indeed, the simple knowledge about Guy Lafleur would be difficult to convey strictly in terms of administrative and structural metadata. An ontology makes it easier to discover relationships between information. An ontology is a bit too complex for customers to use with published information although you will find some micro-format versions embedded in web pages and Facebook pages. This framework shows the relationship between the use of an ontology within an organization and how it informs the metadata model used in publishing information. In this example, the ontology is based on the intended use and inputs from information sources and customer needs. The published metadata is a flat set of attributes and values derived from the ontology. It populates information feeds and satisfies customer needs for searching. Feedback from the publishing environment drives continuous improvement and growth in the ontology to meet unexpected needs and new opportunities. Many organizations will avoid developing an ontology due to the complexity and cost and the lack of content management systems designed to exploit an ontology. Many of the tools are still very immature. Instead, they will develop a comprehensive metadata model and use a subset such as a Dublin Core for external publishing. In the next few courses we will explore how to develop taxonomy and metadata models. The basic approach is to understand our source content and our target outputs. Outputs could be office documents, web pages, PDFs, different media channels, or anything else. By identifying the business and technical needs of source and targets, you will be able to analyze gaps in the required classifications and develop an approach to your classification project. Hello again. This is the end of part one on developing a taxonomy. There are several more modules on taxonomy and metadata if you're interested in learning more. If you have any feedback or questions, please send me an email.